Welcome back to our Bigfoot Truck Camper Renovation Series. In this episode, we'll be swapping out our propane absorption three-way fridge for a 12-volt compressor fridge. I know what you're thinking. This one looks way bigger than this one. Actually, they're both six cubic foot fridges. This one has a little bit more fridge space because this one is a little shallower inside. This one has a little bit more freezer space than this one, so it's pretty much a wash there. The reason we're switching out is the absorption type fridges aren't as efficient. They, are, uh, they use a lot more DC power when you run them on DC, and we use up our propane. Then you gotta fill bottles more often. This way we can run this one just off of our solar power or power coming from our truck when we're driving. And the, con the uh, temperature inside stays a lot more consistent on these compressor fridges than the absorption type fridges. The absorption fridge, the temperature seems to vary a little more. I don't think the freezer gets as cold and they're more susceptible to not running efficiently when they're at angles, which doesn't apply so much to the compressor fridge. So follow along while we get these swapped out in the Bigfoot truck camper. So I'm working on getting this propane fridge out of here so that I can see what kind of an area we have to work with. If I can make it a little bit bigger maybe to get a little bit of a bigger fridge in there. See what, what kind of a space we got anyway. I took the doors off. Um, this fridge is... Uh, on the outside this flange like 24 and 3 quarter inches wide. If I take this flange off, I'm down to like 23 and a quarter, so I can save an inch and a half. Um, depth wise, it's pretty deep. I guess you could take the cooling unit off the back. That might be a bit of a job. Our our door opening is only 23 inches wide. So I really don't think it's gonna go width-wise through the door. Regardless, if I take this front panel off, that's gonna save me uh, two inches in depth. So it's, uh, I'm doing it anyway, and then we'll get the fridge out of there and see, I don't know if I could take the cooling unit off the back. This, um, I've been prying with this pry bar and hammering all the way around here. And I'm starting to get the, uh, the bottom free. It's been a slow process. There's like a foam or something connecting it all together. The fridge may not be salvageable after I get it out. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. But I'm uh, making some progress. I still got two screws in the top, but once I get the bottom all free, I'll tip it out. That's the thing, there's not much room to work in here either. So um, I'll keep working away on it and we'll see where I end up. I just gotta get the screws out of the top. So I ended up having to take out the uh, solar charge controller because when they ran the wires down from the solar panel, they uh, ran it down through the fridge vent and through the tubes. So I couldn't pull the fridge out until I got this wire out and loose and I had to disconnect it so I can feed it through. There. I got access to the top screws, so I can finish taking that trim off and uh, see where we are on uh, dimensions here. Oh yeah, we're gonna make it. We're like 20, 21 and a half. So if we left the front on, we'd be 23 and a half, we wouldn't fit. 21 and a half, we're gonna go. So I guess I did take the uh, front off for a reason. And uh, we're actually gonna get it out of here. It's gonna happen. Success! The frame is off.
Okay. Now, just need to get the fridge out and see if she's going to fit out of here. It should, according to my measuring tape. We got a fridge. So we went with the same uh, brand we had in the Duchess. We had a unique uh, nine cubic foot, I believe, in the Duchess, which we were really happy with. It worked really good. And um, he used, uh, it ran at about four and a half amps at 12 volts. So, um, you know, and didn't run that often. So, and it was quiet. We really had no complaints with it. So, uh, price is reasonable I think for a DC fridge and uh, yeah so we went with the unique again we didn't have room for the nine cubic foot though kind of a drag but um, so we went with the six which the model is UGP 170 L which I think that's 170 liters weighs 76 pounds Yeah, so right off the bat, I'm going to reverse the doors because we need them to open this way. And uh, there's a lot more room to do it out here than there is in there. In plugs they put in the holes on the other side. So we got uh, thread in adjustable height legs or leveling legs down here. This one uh, actually threaded through the bottom door bracket so that had to come off. I assume I need to flip that bracket over. I suppose I could read the instructions. Comes in a little mini ice cube tray, and I think 10 feet maybe of uh, cord. One thing uh, we learned on the other fridge was this has the regular, you know, plug in like a computer would have or something. Um, vibration can come loose. So, good idea. I'll put a bit of silicone around here when I plug it in, and then it isn't going to come out again. I don't see any other brackets, so I can say I gotta flip this one over. We'll move that pin over to the other side for the bottom door bracket. Get a little wee wrench. There is some adjustability. You can slide that bracket in and out of it, so we'll get the door on and just make sure the seal's uh, touching. Usually you'll put like a piece of paper or a business card in between the door gasket and the fridge, and then you should be able to, it should be able to grab it, you know? have a door or doors that open up that way so we threw the uh, new fridge in here quick yesterday as it started to rain so uh, I'm uh, just kind of looking at how it fits deciding where we want to place it in the cabinet I think we're gonna normally the fridge doors stick out past the edge of the cabinet but I think we're gonna set it in pretty much flush um, because we can just gain a little bit of floor space and normally you need it sticking out for the doors to clear but what we're gonna do is put it over to the kitchen side anyway to keep it closer to the kitchen so that'll give us room you know for the door to open and everything um, 
I do have about at the, the roof slopes down. So I have about three inches at the back of extra space there. So I think I'm gonna move the fridge up. Um, higher makes it easier to access anyway. And then we can use the space down below if we can get a three inch space. I think we're about 24 inches wide. We'll be able to have a uh, drawer that is, uh, we have a measuring tape here. These kitchen drawers, let's see what kind of opening that uses. Yeah, that's uh, pretty close to three inches, a little shy of three inches. So it'll be a shallow drawer, but um, a drawer nonetheless. Getting a little bit of storage under there to put some things. And um, instead of just closing this in or putting a drawer up there, which you wouldn't be able to access anyway. So yeah, I think that's the best use of the space there. Um, on the side, I don't know if I'm gonna bother. I may just do a double board here and close it in to the side of the fridge behind the door opening. And I'll do the same up here. Um, with a board that goes this way and then down for the little bit of space that's left because I have a little bit more at the front than the back. And uh, I will put a board on this side to finish this off. And uh, yeah, so I need a few finished boards and then to build that box on the bottom and to make some kind of a drawer to, uh, to slide in and out of there. So we'll get working on that. Oh, turn the light on. I'll tell you, that fridge sure moves around a lot easier than the propane one. <laughs> Since I've cut this hole in the bottom of the fridge cabinet, it really makes me see how much uh, space there is down here. You can see all the way down to there. Which, and I'm using this like couple inches that I'm gonna have under the fridge to make a drawer it seems kind of futile almost when I have all that space so I think I'm gonna cut I think I'm gonna cut out down to take this piece of trim off and cut out right down to this piece of trim and that'll give me another uh, probably three inches I haven't measured it yet but so I'm gonna uh, I drew some lines here I'm gonna cut out even with the edge of this trim back I've taken out the, they had a fiberglass platform here for condensation from the fridge and so on, which um, I took that out and I drew a line back on this side from the same edge of the uh, trim. So we'll uh, see if we can knock that out of there. It's going to be um, a bit of a challenge to cut those lines. They're close to the edge, but might be able to use a jigsaw for some of it and uh, maybe reciprocating saw, oscillating saw. We'll use all the saws. There we go. Okay, so I have my opening opened up now. I have, uh, where did I put my measuring tape? Let's see what we got. So I opened up another four and a quarter inches and I had three. So we're at seven and a quarter inches now. We're gonna have quite the drawer. And uh, we should be able to clear everything. Oh yeah, no problem. All kinds of room. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Any support is appreciated. And if you'd like to see some more current content and behind the scenes action, check us out on Patreon. So I've got the uh, box all boxed in here um, for the drawer underneath the fridge. Have the uh, sides underneath that are gonna hold the drawer slides or do hold the drawer slides. Bottom of the drawer opening. Then the uh, boards that I put in to build up to raise the fridge three inches. So those are two and a quarter, and then there's a three quarter inch ply that sits on top of that. I've kind of leveled the camper somewhat and uh, 
so I could get things kind of level in here. It's easier that way. The only other thing is that the, uh, this, I didn't even realize at first, but this cabinet angles in this way. Nothing straight in an RV either. So my drawer slides are approximately about a quarter of an inch different. Three eighths maybe. So uh, really this, the front of the drawer needs to be about three eighths of an inch shorter on the left side than on the right side. So I'll probably build a square back and then um, make the front angled. That way I can have a square drawer. Okay, so I got left side, right side, back. Left side I did three eighths of an inch um, shorter because of that angled wall. So I'll build a square back. And then, um, then the front will be of the drawer, door will be drawer will be angled, but the back will be square. Is my plan anyway? Okay, we'll get these drawer slides on. Dr. So drawer right. That one goes on this side. Shorter side on the left. Okay, I was looking for a piece about 23 deep and uh, 24 and 3 eighths wide. This piece I had was 22 and a half deep instead of 23, but that should work. That'll uh, be enough for the fridge to sit on. Okay, if I'm really lucky now, this will fit. No, not really lucky. So I uh, put it on the table saw and just took a little bit off to narrow it up. It was just to say a hair too wide and then part of the problem was the uh, the screws I used down the side here were a little bit too big and the heads were catching. So I took those out and put small screws on the bottom instead because it gives you the option. I think we're good now. Beauty. And then our angled front lines up with the cabinet. Perfect. Nice. Pretty close to perfect anyway. Okay, so that's that. And then uh, if we put this thing back in, the bleed base for the fridge. Fridge sits on there, well supported. I'll put some screws down into that too, but you can see the extra space we have in the drawer. So the drawer front will cover it. Okay, I close this in close to the size of the fridge. Our fridge is uh, 19 and a half wide and I close this into about 20. So it should give us a half an inch play side to side. And um, the fridge is uh, set up here. And the fridge is, I think, 50 high. Yeah, and I'm at 50 and a half. You can see uh, my opening's at 50 and a half yet. And this is screwed, screwed right to the board underneath that at attaches this, but this is crooked. You can see how it's thicker on that side than this side. It's like everything you work on is crooked or, you know, out of whack. So you kind of got to make it as square as you can, but my stuff's pretty square there, actually. Um, I don't doubt that. So we get a nice square opening and... Um, should give us a half inch all around the fridge. Once I get this fridge in here, it should be good. I'll uh, take that panel off and screw the fridge down on the back. On the front, I think I might make a couple brackets that hook to the, uh, that'll bolt where the adjustable legs are right now. That stick out just past the face of the fridge, but will be behind the front of the door. Once you open the door, you'll be able to see them. That I can get a screw in each side there and just attach the bottom. and. I don't think I'm going to do anything to the top on this one. If I have the front and the back bolted down, I think I should be good. We'll see how secure it feels. I could make a bracket for the top like I did with the other one, but um, I may be able to save myself a little bit of work there.
in the fridge with some um, cedar shims and got it sitting pretty good in the opening where I wanted it. Then I uh, measured the distance between the uh, threads where these adjusting legs bolted in originally and I transferred the measurements onto my plywood. Drilled holes in those spots. If you can see, I got a bolt there. And then I measured, once it was all even, I measured I needed a six millimeter spacer on this side and a 12 millimeter spacer on this side because this side has the thickness of the hinge uh, bracket. So I found some uh, nuts that I could use the right uh, thickness and put them in between, put the bolts through with some red Loctite, tightened them up. So we're pretty solid there. And um, now I think I'm just gonna go to the back side and possibly just screw that down with a little bit of shimming or something maybe. And I may connect when I build my door holder closed thingy, I may connect that into the side here too, just to give me a little bit more um, solid mounting. So I'm gonna go around to the back and see what I gotta do. Okay, so we're in the back of the fridge here. So uh, all I did back here was uh, go through the bottom uh, mounting bracket here, or yeah, it's bracket, it's a steel plate across that the compressor's on. And uh, I uh, just used a big number 10 by two wood screw down diagonally in through the plywood. Same thing here, there was a little hole there. So I uh, put one down there. So I got two good mounting points down there. So I just need to put this back on and then uh, we'll get her plugged in. Okay, just gonna put a little uh, silicone on this plug so it doesn't back out on us on the bumpy roads. Hold her in there good. It's making noise. We'll let it run for a while and see if it gets cold. Hopefully it does because it's all installed now and I haven't tried it yet. This is a big difference between a DC fridge and a propane fridge. I was in here cleaning up my tools. Um, shortly after I plugged it in, I plugged it in and it might have been, I would say 20 minutes at the most, but I don't really think it's been, it was that long, but we'll say 20 minutes for argument's sake. I didn't time it. And the fridge, I was in here grabbing some tools, cleaning up, and the fridge shut off. So it reached temperature. It's only set on three, so I don't know what temperature that is, but it hit the thermostat temperature in like 20 minutes or less, which the propane fridge, I'd probably have a hard time even telling if it was starting to cool yet by feeling the fins. I threw the, uh, the thermometer in, the, in there, so it's minus 10 already in there. Yeah, works good.